What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Bookie Not Happy Show. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe, not only so that you don't miss any of our plays, but also so that you qualify for the free money that we love to give out. If we sweep the card, I will be giving out $20 to a random person. All you got to do to qualify, number one, hit the subscribe button right now. Number two, comment down below, three and oh, give us the good vibes that we need. And if we sweep the card, I will choose somebody randomly from the comments and I will cash app you 20 bucks. That's all you got to do. Easy $20. So with that being said, going over today's college basketball plays, as I mentioned, I've got three plays for you. So let's just go ahead and dive right into them. First play we're going to be looking at is USC traveling on the road to play Oregon in the Pac-12 opener right here. USC currently 6-5 and five on the year, 5-6 and six against the spread, going against Oregon, who's 8-3, and 7-4 and four against the spread. Most recently, USC is coming off a road win over Alabama State, winning that game by 20, covering the spread as 18.5-point favorites. On the other side, Oregon just won at home 84-70 to 70 over Kent State, also covering that one as 6.5-point favorites. They only met one time last year, and uh, Oregon won that game by 18 at home. This is a new year. Got some new players here. Looking at USC here, we're going to dig a little deeper into both these teams. USC, they're limping into conference play. They've only won six games so far this season. They've got some bad losses. You know, they lost to UC Irvine as 11.5-point favorites most recently. As one of the more recent games, I should say, they lost to Long Beach State as 14-point favorites. They also have losses to Gonzaga and Auburn, which are a little bit more respectable. Boogie Ellis is their leading scorer. He's an explosive guard, um, 6'3 player, averaging almost 20 points a game. And, uh, you know, I also really like what they have in Isaiah Collier, 6'5 freshman. I think he's got NBA potential. He brings in 16 points. 4.3 assists per game. Very athletic wing player that I, I think is going to be a good player here. Kobe Johnson's another solid guy for them, averaging 11.4 and 5.6 rebounds per game. USC currently ranks 46th overall, according to Ken Palm. Offense ranks 51st in the nation as far as efficiency goes, and their defense ranks a solid 57th. They are 93rd in tempo, based on their pace of play. Looking on the other side now, let's dig into Oregon. This is a team in Oregon who had some decent expectations to start the year, but, you know, injuries have really hurt them. Nafali Dante is a 6'11", 210 big guy, got injured, injured his hamstring first game of the season. He's not expected back until mid-January. Nate Biddle is a 7-foot big man. He only played three games before also dealing with an injury. So they've just had some injury issues here. They are led by Jermaine Kuznard. Most recently, he had 27 points against Kent State. 6'4 player in him. You know, he's a combo guard, likes to shoot the ball. I think he's a transfer from South Carolina. Um, he's after 13 points a game, 5.3 rebounds per game, and leads him in assists at only 2.7. Um you know, they, they the Oregon does not shoot the ball from deep much. Uh, Jackson Shelston is a solid freshman for them. His role has increased, you know, due to some of the injuries and just lack of, you know, good players for them. He's averaging about 13 points a game. Kari Oquendo is a 6'4 guard. He's a transfer from Georgia. He also adds in 11.2 for them. Due to the injuries, you know, Kwame Evans Jr. has become their best post player. He's a 6'9 forward, only averages about 8.4 points per game. Oregon currently ranked 48th overall, according to Ken Palm. Their offense is ranked 50th in efficiency, and their defense is ranked 61st. And their tempo drops a little bit compared to USC. They're ranked 135th in the nation, um, as I mentioned, below USC by a little bit. So what is our play here, guys? We are going with USC to cover. Currently, the line is at two and a half points. This is the conference opener. But in my opinion, Oregon just has too many injuries. And this makes them just, you know, lacking experience that they need. USC, on the other hand, 
They're they're adding Bronny James now. I think this is his third or fourth game, and I think he's kind of due for a breakout game. Boogie Ellis is the best player in this game, and as I mentioned, I really like Collier as a guy that's really starting to find his place and uh, getting more opportunity, and he's starting to play a lot better. The injuries to Oregon is just going to be too much in general. They just don't have enough inside, especially. Um, you know, USC still has their size inside. Iwuchukwu is not a big scorer, but he is a seven-footer for them who can protect the rim, something that Oregon is just really missing inside. USC has an 8.2 block percentage advantage to only 6.1% for Oregon. USC will play fast here. Um, they're going to attack Oregon's weak inside front court. And uh, I think USC covers this. I think it's uh, two and a half points. We'll take it. So that'll be our first play. Give us USC plus the two and a half points on the road against Oregon. Digging into our second game here. Staying in the Pac-12, guys. All right. This is a conference that I know decently, having grown up a lot on the West Coast. We're looking at UCLA traveling to Oregon State in their Pac-12 opener. UCLA comes into this conference opener coming off four losses in a row. Their last two losses were at home, and this put them under 500 at five and six on the season. Oregon State, on the other hand, comes in with a five-game winning streak, putting them now at eight and three on the season, um, which is good for them. You know, definitely a uh, a you know record that they should be fairly proud of. Gives them some momentum, but as we'll talk about, lack of uh, competition is going to be their problem. Let's dig into a little bit UCLA here. You know, they've had issues scoring the ball as of late, only averaging 62 points per game in their four-game losing streak. Um, they most recently lost to Maryland 69-60, to and they were outscored by 15 points in the first half of that game. On the season, UCLA is averaging 67.7 points per game and giving up an average of 62. Their leading score is Mack at 15.2 points per game. And, uh, you know, his problem, though, is he has not shot over 35.7% in the last four out of, out of five games. And overall, he's only shooting about 39%, which is decent. But he's, as I mentioned, struggled a little bit as of recently. They also get decent contributions from Adam Bona, who's averaging 12 points, six and a half rebounds. And, you know, let's dig in now to our other team here, looking at Oregon State, as I mentioned, eight and three on the season. And they are 0-3 facing teams, though, from a major conference where they are losing those games by an average of 20 points. In their last game, they were at home in a 76-57 to win over Idaho State. Played well that game, but again, that was against Idaho State. All right, on the season, Oregon State's averaging 71.5 points per game. They give up 69.1. Their leading scorer is Jordan Pope, averaging almost 17 per game. And they also get solid contributions from guys like Dexter Acano, um, averaging about 11.7, and Tyler Bilodeau averaging 11.5. So what is our play here? Okay. I went back and forth on this one, but the digger, the more I dig into this game, the more that I liked UCLA. I think we're getting a good number here. I think this opened right around five. It's now up to about six and a half. And I think it's for good for good reason. Okay. You know, when you look deeper beyond just the records, UCLA, yeah, they've lost four in a row, but they've played all pretty good teams, including two of those teams that are borderline top 25 teams. Uh, the loss to Northridge at home is definitely concerning, but I think that's a big wake-up call for this team. In general, UCLA has got a lot more talent. As I mentioned, looking at Oregon State, yeah, they've got an okay, respectable record, but they really have not played or beaten very – any anybody really losing by an average of 20 points in all three games that they've played against teams from a major conference is got to be concerning you know they typically don't have a very good home court advantage here it's going to be breaks so i don't give them a whole lot of home court advantage it's not like ucla is some top 10 team like they've been in the past so i think uh you know lack of home court 
you know, real advantage. You're getting a team in UCLA who's got a little bit of a downswing, and that's made the market give us a good price here. So give me UCLA as our second play as six and a half point favorites to cover the spread here on the road at Oregon State. And our last play here, we're going to be looking at Coppin State traveling to Maryland. All right. Coppin State continues a lengthy road trip here against Maryland. Coppin State, as usual, one of the worst teams in the country. Just one win right now through 13 games played. Defensively, Coppin State, they're giving up 75.3 points per game. Then their most recent game, they gave up 87 points. Justin Winston is their offensive leader, averaging 13.7 and 5.4 rebounds. He's the only player, you know, averaging double digits for them. That's concerning. They also get respectable contributions from Cameron Sparrow, averaging 6.7, and Zahari Harrison, averaging 5.4. Pretty disgusting, okay? Greg Spurlock is actually their second leading scorer. He's averaging 8.6. So they a pretty big drop off when you look at that after Justin Winston. On the other side, Maryland, they return home after beating UCLA, as I mentioned. Defensively, Maryland has been solid this year. Okay, only giving up 64.3 points per game. As I mentioned, they only gave 60, gave up 60 to UCLA. The Maryland offense has also been good. They're averaging 73 points shooting 41% from the floor. Their leader is Jameer Young, averaging 19 points per game. Dante Scott averages almost 10 at 9.8, and Deshaun Harris-Smith averages 8.1. Their second leading scorer, though, is actually Julian Reese, as I look into this a little deeper. He's averaging 14 points and almost 10 rebounds a game. And I think, you know, Dante Scott has been better in – Last year, I know he was better for them. I expect his scoring average to improve as the season continues on. So what is our play here? We are going to take the home court favorites laying a big number, somewhere around 29 and a half, maybe even 30 and a half at this point. We know that they are obviously a way better team, but it's not just that, you know, you look at this Coppin State team, and they have not been able to not only cover or not only win, but they, they've got some big losses. Losing to, by 45 to Virginia Tech early in the year, 23 at Navy, 31 at George Washington, and most recently they lost by 39 to James Madison. So, you know, they just don't have a whole lot of fight in them at any point. Maryland, we talked about them beating UCLA, which was definitely respectable, especially on the road. But they've also covered this spread against a similar type opponent, most recently against Alcorn State, beating them by 40 at home. So I don't think this is a team that's going to just slow down once the game gets later in the game. I think they really want to put it on teams. And uh, that's going to be our third and final play. Give us Maryland at home to cover the 30 and a half point Big spread, but I like it here. That's going to do it for our three plays today. As I mentioned, we are giving away 20 bucks for free. All you have to do to qualify is, number one, subscribe. Number two, comment below. Three and O. Oh, give us the good vibes. And if we, if and when, because I'm feeling it today, guys, when we sweep this card, I will randomly cash up somebody 20 bucks. As always, our motto here is to make your bookie not happy. We're off to a great start in college basketball. I'm so glad that it's back. Hope you've had a good holiday, and uh, let's keep the winning going. Thanks. I'll see you on the next video.